What's up, everyone? Riley here, and welcome back to the latest segment of Overkill Reviews, Banger TV's weekly heavy metal review show. If you haven't already, make sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and check out that dang Patreon. Today, we're going to beckon in those autumn feelings with a psychedelic doom rock band that is straight out of the birthplace of doom itself. Let's get into it with Aluna's latest release, Fever Dreams. It's out September 20th, 2024, via Heavy Psych Records. <laughs> Formed in Birmingham, UK in 2006, Aluna has been hazy, rocky, doom since day one, although our day one lineup no longer holds. Up until 2017, we had Sophie Day as our incredible vocalist. They then ushered Sean Greenaway in in 2018. Our original standing member that is with the band still is Jake Mason on drums. We have Dan Butchmore on bass. He joined the band in 2013. We now have Matt Noble on guitars. And before this release even came out, Sean Greenaway left the band. So where does that leave them? I'm not sure, but let's check out this new record. Taking it back in time to the middle ages of Aluna, I'm talking like 2017. They were signed to Spart Records and they put out the album Selenial. It was chunky, it was warm toned, it was slow a lot of the time, and it was similar in sound to previous releases they had, like White Whorehound, for example. And it played way more in that field of just doom than it did rock, per se. In 2018, they put out an EP called Amber and Gold. This was their first release with new vocalist Sean Greenaway. It had a cover of the song Wicked Games on it, and it was wicked in itself. And it still felt like a Luna, regardless of the vocal change, because I find a lot of the times when bands switch vocalists, they then have a hard time finding their identity or just being what they once were. And I think fans are also oftentimes not as receptive to it as they were with the previous vocalist. Except then, the following year, being the busy bees that they are, in 2019, they put out their first full length, with Sean Greenaway. It was called Violet Hour. It was released via Heavy Psych Sounds. And this really felt like the pinnacle turning point of who they once were and who they now are. And it was kind of a shock after Amber and Gold. I definitely wasn't expecting it, but these characteristics that they started experimenting with then in 2019 have carried into this new album, Fever Dreams Now. And I'm just gonna call it this newfound glory of pop and roll. And this experimentation of a cleaner palette it is in its full presence on this new release of Fever Dreams. So I've really had to accept my fate that bar like buried are those distorted guitar tones. They have been gone for eons and gone are the days of those dragged out, slow, repetitive doom riffs. We are saying hello to shorten song lengths and picking up the general pace altogether, breaching further into that era of a sound and atmosphere and type of doom that relies less on sort of a tension and release sort of atmosphere build and relies more on short, punchier, catchier, hookier riffs. And with those loss of things, I feel like disappointed because they had such a good grasp as a band on that doomy distortion and I think character went with it out the door when it left. Ultimately, with these changes that I've had to come to terms with, I've also begun to notice where they're placing their focus when they write, when they create, when they are now executing this album. And there is a reliance that they have on a couple of different things. And unfortunately, 
where I have found these things that they are relying on, I have also found them to be predictable, um, sort of bland, or really nothing special. So let's break this into two key pieces. We have Sean, our vocalist, and then we have everybody else. The song structures are, you know, basic top 40s pop songs, verse, chorus, verse, guitar solo, really clean tone. That's a riff. One of those type of deals. It's quite simplistic in all forms, except I feel this is intentional because Sean seems to be our massive focal point here. She's an incredible vocalist, but at what point are we now just using the fact that this chick's got pipes as our crutch as a band? We have a meh sort of outline, and then she just hops in there and she takes it away and she takes it everywhere on her own. And without Sean singing her little heart out, what do we have? What do we have as a band? Who are we? What happened to the good old days of building an atmosphere in a song and a story, a progression to lead us somewhere, instrumentally as well, different dynamics, layers, feeling? Uh, a lot of the time it felt like there was a brief introduction and I could kind of get behind it. And then bam, she was just there at this level and we stay at this level, not adding, not taking, just always operating on the same level. I was bored to say the very least because I knew it was a one trick pony and that was all it sort of felt like. Regardless of how bitter I am and that loss of good, melancholic, whimsical doom, uh, anyways, credit where credit's due, Aluna and Fever Dreams, they've got groove. I was at a friend's party a couple years ago in Toronto, and you know when you just meet random people and end up in the strangest conversations? He was like, yo, I've been listening to this stoner rock band from the UK, and he shows me this video, and it's Aluna playing live, and Sean's there with the mic, and they're mid-groove, and she's rocking back and forth. She's got this retro sky blue like jumper suit on they just looked incredibly cool and fair play every single song has a point where they just break into a groove it's got a really cool vocal piece or there's some thing at some point that is a great hook for example the album kicks in with a track called never too late at about 14 seconds in it opens up with a harmonized sort of guitar riff that leads into a chuggier, more simplistic riff. And that flow between the two is just so, so smooth. Far From Reality was the single that they put out for this album. It's got such a cool retro rock and roll feel. It's got a really clean, really good toned guitar solo. And it goes hand in hand. Those clean tones, they go hand in hand with that Jethro, Jethro Tull backing flute moment that they bring in. it can be catchy and with in the simplicity that's a bonus we can just jam we can just groove we can just vibe fever dreams was produced by chris fielding he's done work with bands like conan electric wizard hooded menace primordial uh but something here just doesn't sit right with me and the theory that i've come up with is aluna being one of the cleaner toned sounding bands that he's done work with. So that has left it feeling a little bit incohesive. Um, the first one being Sean's vocals. This poor woman, I keep bringing her up, but she gives so much for force in her vocal range. She's got this falsetto where she goes up and then she comes back down again. It's so abrupt. And in the mix, it's probably too abrupt. It feels like there's Sean and then 
It feels like there's the band. This seems like a theme. She's sitting right here at the front of the mix. And within her being at the front of the mix, that loss of harmonious amalgamation between the instrumental and those epic vocals loses its levels in fluidity when I just want them to come together and be this conjoined epic unit. They're not. And sometimes I felt like I was being tricked with the mix finally coming together. For example, there's a song called I've Paid the Price. It opens up with a piano bit that's very sort of Baroness-styled rock, down-tuned. The levels are great. The tones are more grit. But then the second the vocals come in, why are you in, why are you in my face? <laughs> and it just screws, it just, it threw me through the ringer. There's so much that Aluna has done that I've really enjoyed and loved. And there's things that I don't love as much, but they are funky, they're poppy, they're rocky, they're kind of bluesy, but I feel like they might have had this moment of identity crisis where it was, we've got this really cool thing going on. Let's just put all of our peas into that pod and everything else behind that kind of fell away and it felt a little bit more uncomfortable than previous releases they had and it felt less like it was from the heart and I'm very curious to see where they go from here with Sean leaving the band as the vocalist if they get a new vocalist if she goes on to do something on her own who knows but I guess we will find out so with that being said I'm gonna give this a 3.5 out of 5 skulls today on Overkill Reviews. First up I've got Hell is other people. They're a post black metal project from Windsor, Ontario. They've got their second full length out October 11th, 2024 via Transcending Obscurity Records. So make sure to give that a listen. Second up, I've got Australia's Death Metalers. This is their third full length called The Immortal Realm out September 13th, 2024. They are one of those death metal projects that lean more heavy on the sludge side of things, if you know what I mean. And last, but certainly not least, we have Castle. It is a heavy Doom project, half of it being Canadian, the other half of it being American. This is their seventh full-length album. It's called Evil Remains, and it's out September 6th, 2024, via Hammerheart Records. So make sure to give that a listen. And I will see you next time.